So I start with a uh, clinical case, courtesy of Ben Chong and, and Raja, that illustrates the ability of MR to provide uh, significant informative information, uh, not only in a qualitative, but also a quantitative sense. And this is something that you really appreciate here because of the uh, excellent training that DPAN provides with his fellows. And I've set in on this and uh, been, been witness to it. But here is uh, a case that appears to be hypertrophic. On the second column, you see the uh, delayed contrast and has images. In a couple of uh, pathologic cases here in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and uh, at the top <clears throat> and a dilated cardiomyopathy. Again, interesting findings. Uh, these graphics uh, on the left, these are color coded. Uh, and the color code here from, from going now from endo out to epi, uh, from red to blue, represent the helical angle of the main fibers that I talked about from epi to endo. And you see that in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and in uh, this dilated cardiomyopathy, those angles are preserved. Right leaning in the endo, left leaning at the epi, more horizontal in the mid. During, um, uh, during systole, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this, but in this particular column, what this shows is actually this, this rotational angle of the sheetlets that make up the layers within the myocardium and how those sheetlets rotate. So this color code is a coding of the maximum angle that's obtained. Uh, the, the blue to red is the amount of the angle and the greater the angle, the brighter this color. Now, the potential for applying this in the heart is certainly there, and how might we use it? Well, one of the first ways in which that this could be used um, is to delineate what actually happens with the advent of stem cell uh, therapies in regenerating myocardial tissue. Uh, determining on a microstructural level the impact of these cell therapies is something that this technique, I think, is particularly well suited for, and this is a promise on the, on the horizon. Being able to apply diffusion tensor imaging with the, the ability to assess whether or not these therapies actually produce the structure that is normal and the function of that structure that is normal uh, is on the horizon with th this particular approach and with this scanner. So I think this is one of the things that we would like, like to pursue. Um, one of the challenges that I mentioned is that you're trying to look at, at diffusion along a fiber and the fiber itself is shortening and twisting and, and rotating. So you have these three motions, this displacement and defor uh, deformation and, and the shortening uh, uh, that the uh, diffusion is taking place in. But with the kinds of combined images that I just showed you, the potential that Kevin Moulin is showing here is to actually began to look at these uh, individually and, dis and, and tease them out. Uh, the previous slide it was with all three, movie. Uh, here is just uh, the uh, deformation and shortening. And here, looking at fiber shortening only. Uh, the, and then this is this color, uh, it, it is color encoded. So this is one of the uh, advantages that's on the horizon and one that the SEMA is well positioned to uh, further develop uh, and we certainly 
or interested in, in, and uh, uh, hopeful uh, that this will make the kinds of difference that we just talked about and be applicable to a range of applications, but certainly in evaluating the practical impact of these cell therapies as they emerge and determining exactly what's going on in the myocardium when you administer a cell therapy. So uh, the take home messages here uh, is that I think this parameter is a new parameter that we've discovered that needs to be considered when you're looking at diseases and therapies for those uh, diseases in an effort to uh, normalize uh, gene and gene expression. Uh, if you have a therapeutic approach uh, that modulates the stiffness of the cytoplasm and only the cytoplasm without a concomitant change in the nucleus itself, this will not be as effective as, as having them both change. Or to put it another way, I think the relationship between these two is a critical determinant of the effectiveness of biomechanical sensing from blood flow into the endothelial cells and how this ratio is modulated by therapies in the future, whether they, they, <coughs> whether they be um, uh, derived from mRNA, for example, or a, a general chemical, either of those, it is important that one appreciates and investigates and looks at this parameter in order to determine how effective it will or will not be.